Happy Beltane, my darling viewers. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. And I am so thrilled to be doing this video because Beltane is my second favorite holiday of the year, second only to Samhain, of course. So we are just going to just have some fun with this holiday on the channel. And I'm going to be talking about Beltane goddesses. And there are a lot of them. This is just a sampling of some of my favorite goddesses to discuss, to work with, to honor, and to celebrate on this very sacred holiday. Okay, first, a little rundown of what Beltane actually is. Beltane is also known as May Day, and it is celebrated on May 1st. But you can actually start celebrating the evening at dusk on May April 30th and celebrate all the way through sunrise on May 2nd because it is a big holiday and it is basically the epitome of springtime as we're burgeoning into summer and of course summer reaches its apex apex at the summer solstice that is the midsummer point and then you'll have this another apex holiday of Lunasaw on August 1st. So Beltane, again, it's like that apex of spring right before it turns into summer. So it's a very big energy holiday because everything is growing. Everything is alive. We have more light hours in the day. Even the night is starting to get light out. And there is so much beauty. All of the flowers are flourishing hence why I'm wearing a flower crown today. They are actually making flower crowns with live flowers are one of the most fun activities to do on Beltane. It's such an absolutely gorgeous holiday. And it is a fire festival, as all the cross quarter days are. They are, of course, Imbolc, Beltane, Lunasa, and Samhain. They are the cross quarter days. In other words, they're not an equinox or a solstice. And they are all associated with fire in some way. Beltane is the fire of sexuality, though. It's a very sexy, fertile holiday because that's what it is. It's fertility, fertility of the land, and yes, fertility of people. So there's actually old traditions that state that babies were conceived on Beltane during sexy rituals and festivities were blessed. They had a little extra special blessing from the gods and goddesses. So... I think that that's a really fun little fact of how the ancients may have viewed Beltane. And traditional things other than sex rituals on Beltane are the Maypole, which we still sometimes see today, you know, dancing around the Maypole, holding ribbons, and then it gets they get wrapped around. The Maypole being, of course, the phallic symbol and it being a sexual holiday. This makes great sense. And also hand fasting rituals. And hand fastings are traditionally a year and a day marriages. You would hand fast at Beltane and then on May 2nd the next year, you would decide whether you wanted to continue the union. This was a way of testing the waters so you weren't married for life and realize you weren't fit for each other unless a child is conceived. If a child was conceived in that first year or born in that first year, then the marriage cannot be annulled. Otherwise, it can be. It's an interesting thing. And hand fastings were carried on through the medieval period, actually, with a little bit of a Christian tweak to them. And they are resurging in popularity today. And a hand fasting is an absolutely beautiful thing to do, either as part of your wedding festivities or as a separate ritual, especially if your family wouldn't understand why you would incorporate a hand fasting into your wedding. So now that we've covered a little bit of what Beltane actually is, let's get into some Beltane goddesses. The first one I want to discuss is the Irish warrior and sexual goddess Maeve. Because of her association with sexuality and warfare even, because warfare is a very fiery, elemental, very physical thing to be associated with, she is often honored at Beltane. Her name literally means she who intoxicates. That's both intoxication of the substances variety and intoxication of the sexual variety. She was so sexually alluring that it's said that no man could resist her. 
So she is an absolutely fierce goddess to honor and celebrate with on this holiday. And I would say if you wanted to really celebrate with her, lean into her themes. Um, sex magic, certainly. Making and drinking mead, because mead is a honeyed liquor that is named for her. Or just, you could honey your wine, which I really love doing. It's a great Beltane thing. Uh, you would put honey and fruit in wine and you can warm it. Some people prefer white wine and chilling it like overnight. I, I'm a red wine person, so I choose to warm the wine and have the honey really infused within it. It's really delicious. And uh, just having a really wild, raucous party, dance, and just let yourself go. Next, we have Rhiannon, who is a favorite of mine, as I'm sure a lot of you realize. I've written a lot of blog posts about her. I've had several videos about her. And she's a goddess of horses and sovereignty. And she's very much within this lover and queen archetypes. And she is often honored at Beltane due to her fertility aspect. She is, as a lover goddess, a also a fertility deity. Even the symbolism of being associated with horses connects her to fertility as much as it does to sovereignty. So honor Rhiannon by really just taking the time out to do things for yourself, things that make you feel good because you're honoring her sovereignty aspect. Um, and also honor her by song and dance. The birds of Rhiannon are often depicted as songbirds and she is so associated with music. And uh, I find that just blasting Fleetwood Mac's Rhiannon with Stevie Nicks vocals is a fun way to incorporate Rhiannon into any time of year, but especially on Beltane, it holds a little special significance. Next goddess is Blodowip, who is another Welsh Celtic goddess originally found in the Mabinogion alongside Rhiannon. She is a goddess of both flowers and owls, and she is a sovereignty goddess as well, just like Rhiannon is, but she's a little bit different. She is the May Queen and Flower Bride sovereignty goddess. So she started out as literally a flower bride, created from flowers to marry her husband, Lou. But he didn't respect her and didn't love her well enough. And she found true love later with a man named Grenou. And they plotted to kill her husband. And this is her coming really into her queen aspect in her, and her sovereignty of self. I don't love this person. I shouldn't have been forced to marry this person. I want to have freedom to marry the man that I actually love. She goes to the extreme of let's kill my husband, which was ill advised, but she did that and then ended up cursed to be an owl because they thought no worse fate could befall a flower goddess, a goddess who literally was flowers, than never getting to be within the sun because owls are, of course, night birds. So she is very much that young lover archetype. And again, the embodiment of the May Queen. And often in Beltane rites, you did have someone who would be crowned the May Queen. And interestingly, they did this also in the movie Midsommar. But I will note that that was a little bit weird because that was supposed to be a midsummer ritual, summer solstice, but they were crowning a May queen. <laughs> so they kind of mixed Beltane and Midsummer together in those two, in that particular movie. Super creepy though. Very, very creepy. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about the ideal Arthurian goddess to work with on this holiday. And that's of course, Guinevere. She is the sovereignty of the land made manifest. Her just like Lou's marriage to Bloodowith, Arthur's marriage to Guinevere is what really cemented his right to rule. And that is her power, is she cemented his right to rule. And that's why the love story with Lancelot was what brought down the, brought the downfall of Camelot, because Lancelot had her heart now, had her love. And that would have made him the next king should he have wanted it. 
And uh, what connects her really to Beltane so much is that she is, again, a May queen, a flower bride, and is often, even in the medieval romances, depicted as going a maying, which is to go and pick flowers with her handmaidens on the morning of Beltane. And then I'm going to cover three goddesses who aren't Celtic now. <laughs> Just quick. I only have about five more minutes left of the video. So Aphrodite. Of course, she's a goddess of love and sexuality. Of course, she's associated with Beltane. She's the great lover, the creatrix, a sex goddess, and yes, a fertility deity. She is perfect to party with on Beltane. She is all about pleasure and Beltane is absolutely a pleasure-filled holiday. Just let yourself have fun for Beltane. Mm -hmm. Then Persephone. Now, why would Persephone be associated with Beltane? This is related to the fact that we can celebrate Persephone really on the spring equinox and on Beltane. She is a spring goddess in origin who then became a goddess of the underworld. So she can be celebrated on the spring equinox, Beltane, the autumnal equinox, and Samhain, because you're celebrating her light aspects and her dark aspects. So in this case, you're celebrating her as the goddess of spring and her fertility aspect, the mother of Dionysus aspect, because there is a version where she's mother of Dionysus. I do cover that in a previous video. And you celebrate her with that whole flowers aspect, right? Flowers, pomegranate wine, maybe. Maybe incorporate her with some pomegranate wine. Eating pomegranates, as they are also fruit of fertility, is another great way to incorporate Persephone. And then the last goddess is the Norse goddess of love and beauty and sexuality, as well as warfare, Freya. And since she's a love and sex goddess, known for being very sexually open and even a little bit voracious in her appetites, She's perfect to celebrate on this sexy and very lust-filled holiday. But I want to note, as much as I've talked about Beltane as a sexy holiday, it's also a holiday about love. So that's why you can balance these more sexually voracious goddesses like Freya or Maeve with truly lover goddesses, goddesses who embody love and romance like Aphrodite and Guinevere, they are that more truly love and that lust and love entwine kind of energy. So I think Freya would be really fun to work with on Beltane to celebrate with. She's certainly a fun goddess. And I would incorporate something like Amber as it's a sacred gem to her and imagery of falcons and cats because they are sacred to Freya as well you wanted to bring her energy into there. And a note of a connection between Maeve and Freya, if you wanted to work with or honor both on Beltane, is that Maeve has honey being sacred to her and Freya's amber is just honey that has been calcified and petrified into the form of a stone. So there's the link there. And also the sex and war links. So they would, I think, celebrate pretty nicely together if you wanted to work with both. I do hope that you've had a great time watching this video and that it's kicked off your Beltane to inspire you. If you have liked the video, please do like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whiterosofavalon.life, for more content. I also always link my Discord server in the comments below, and there's links to my pages for my for donations, should you want to support my YouTube channel and my blog, and my link for my tarot and oracle, re oracle card reading services. All of that's in the description box below, along with a few blog posts that pertain to the subject at hand. So have a very sexy and blessed Beltane, my lovelies. Bye now.